What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we're going to be talking about how narcissists love it, love it, when you say this one phrase, I'm not perfect either. If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. Boom. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, folks. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all, when I tell y'all that narcissists love when people say this, when people utter this phrase, when people open their mouths and say this right here to narcissistic, to, to them, like when you admit fault, when you open your mouth and admit that you might have also done something wrong, that you might have also, but you, that you yourself are not perfect either. They feel like they won. They feel like they got you. Got you. What's that Kanye West mean? Got you. <laughs> Surprise. Got you. When you admit fault, they feel like they've won. Because if you admit that you've ever done anything wrong to a narcissist in front of them, if you, if you admit that you've done something wrong to them, to them, <laughs> you know, if you're telling them that you've done something wrong to them, they feel like they beat you. They feel like this is what, like damn near the ultimate victory that they can achieve from you because now you've admitted fault. Anything that they say, anything that they do, they can always come back to this. They can always come back to this one moment in time, no matter how long ago it was, no, no matter how recent or far off it was, they can always come back to this one moment in time and say, remember when you did this? Did you not admit to be not being perfect? Did you not, did you yourself not admit to making mistakes as well? They love that. Love it. Love it. They love when you admit fault because they rarely ever do. If you admit fault, then if, let me say this right here. If you yourself admit fault, they feel like they don't have to. But if they do, they can just downplay it because you admitted that you were wrong in some circumstances as well. You also have admitted that you are wrong, that you've done something wrong. They got you. And then, no, so I know there might be some relationship experts and relationship coaches who might watch this video and say, well, Lee, healthy people should be able to admit that they are, that they are wrong, that they've done something wrong, that they feel like they might have wronged somebody. Yes, healthy people should do that in a healthy relationship dynamic. But if you are dealing with an unhealthy, mentally unhealthy, narcissistic person, you admitting that you are wrong or something, you lose. That's giving away all your power. And, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not telling y'all to be deceptive. I'm just telling y'all telling to watch what you say, which also sounds narcissistic on my end, which I understand. But yeah, this is how you have to survive with narcissists. If you still have to deal with them, if you have to deal with them, if you have to co-parent with them, if you have, to, if you're still with them in a relationship, this is the type of stuff you have to learn how to navigate. Because once you admit that you are wrong, you are wrong forever. Pardon the interruption. Just wanted to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. If you haven't hit that subscribe button right now and make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss any uploads. Helps me reach more people. Now back to the video. I know for a lot of people watching this video, it's too late. I know y'all gonna say, well, leave. Well, I wish I'd have saw this video uh, a year ago or 10 years ago or 15 years ago. I wish I'd have saw this video a while ago because I didn't admit it that I was wrong so many times. Like, and that's the crazy thing about narcissists, y'all. Some of them will damn near force you to admit that you were wrong. They'll force it out of you. And then if you say yes, they got you. Like, it, it might not even be your intent on admitting that you were wrong, right? But they hammer away at you. They keep saying, they keep hammering away at you. They keep trying to belittle you. They keep trying to, you know, disengage with you or just disrespect you until you admit that you've also done something wrong and then they got you. And then they feel like they're free. They have free reign in the relationship. Now I have free reign. Now I can do what I want to do. Now I can get away with whatever I want to get away with because you have admitted that you were wrong. So I win. And I know people, y'all, I, I, I understand that people are gonna say, well, Lee, it's not a wins and losses thing. Y'all, if you're dealing with a narcissist, it is a wins and losses thing. It absolutely is. But this is not me telling you to just to just to you know not admit that you are wrong, but like it's me telling you to watch who you admit that you are wrong to. Because it is a power dynamic. You are giving away damn near all of your power. 
if you are trying to navigate a narcissistic relationship or set boundaries in a toxic relationship, because once you admit that you are wrong, they got you. They done, they gonna burn you. They gonna burn you to a crisp. They gonna burn you to a relationship crisp. I'm not gonna say like bur- literally, literally burn you up. Some of them, some of them might, some of them might, but they might try to burn you to a relationship crisp because now they got you cooked. Now they got you bent over a barrel. Whatever y'all wanna say, whatever euphemism or analogy or metaphor y'all wanna throw in here, they got you. So watch how you communicate with them, y'all. And then, I, 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 I know it sounds trivial. I know it sounds stupid. Lee, that sounds dumb as hell. Exactly. I know it sounds dumb as hell. But this is how you have to talk to some people if you want to maintain a relationship with them. Well, Lee, I'm just, I, I just gotta, if I'm wrong, I feel like I have to admit it. Yo, that's you. Everybody's, look, you don't have to take my advice, y'all. I mean, seriously. You can take my advice with a grain of salt. You can take it and apply it strategically to your own personal situation, to your own personal life. Whatever works for you. I just want y'all to be safe. I want y'all to survive. I want y'all to thrive. Because there's so many people out here who are not being safe, who are not surviving, who are not thriving. Because you're, in, you're engulfed and wrapped up in this toxicity, in this toxic-ass environment. You don't get a chance to thrive and live and survive. Because you will always be beaten down by what you've admitted to. Or what, they, or what, you, what you get caught in. You know, let me go and say this as well. If you have ever cheated on a narcissist, somebody asking me this, I was live on TikTok the other day, right? And somebody asked me uh, in a comment, in the, uh, in the live chat, they said, hey Lee, what if you emotionally cheated on a narcissist and they found out, would they ever get over it? Would they ever forgive you? I was like, no, yo, you, no, no. If they, if they found out you've been telling somebody you, your work husband or your work wife, you love them or whatever, they will never forgive you. And th- is that wrong on your end too? Yes. That's what I'm just saying, y'all. I'm not, and this is not me trying to victim blame. This is me just, sa- just saying, if you feel like you at work being, because you're disconnected from your partner and you connected to someone else, it might be time to re, re- evaluate your relationship. You see that you're in. If you feel like you're in a toxic relationship and this push you to someone else and you end up cheating emotionally or physically, and you end up trying to stay with that narcissist or they find out or you confess, you lo- uh, pfft, you will never, ever be forgiven. In their eyes, it, you will always be a cheater, regardless if y'all slept together or whatever. You will always be a cheater. You will always be a liar. And they will punish you for the rest of your life for that if you decide to stay with them. So this is not me just saying, like, well, Lee, I've cheated. Again, y'all, if they found out, the thought of you being with somebody else will never, ever leave their mind. You're always going to be dirty. You're always going to be soiled in their eyes, and they're always going to treat you as such. Just like it's not even—it doesn't even have to be cheating. If they catch you in a lie, you will always be a liar. If they catch you uh, misspeaking, you will always be a misspeaker. <laughs> you know, they, you will always be whatever you admit to, or what, whatever you admit to, or whatever you are caught in. You will always be that. There will always be a permanent label attached to you. It's a—it's the damn near a tattoo. You know, it's damn near a tattoo. And even if you get laser removal, you can still see where the tattoo used to be at. I see those laser, those uh, laser uh, tattoo removal uh, videos, and it's just popping. Like, pop, 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 pop. People, ah, it's painful. The tattoo removal is painful. So it's like, just like staying in a toxic relationship after you've been caught up doing something that might not be so copacetic, it's painful. Pop, 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 pop. Zapping it, zapping it, them lasers, zapping it, and exploding the ink underneath the skin. That's what it does, doesn't it? That's what I'm just telling y'all, y'all. If you like. Again, this is a, it's kind of a weird video to make, but this is how you have to navigate some of these toxic relationship dynamics when you're with this type of person. And again, I am openly admitting that it is also unfair that you have to do this, but this is the space that you are in when you're in a toxic relationship trying to survive. If you are, like I said, if you have broken all ties with ties with them and you're no longer married to them or you don't have to communicate with them as much, like y'all, admitting that you were wrong in the past just is being like it will still be used against you it's still your faults will still be brought up right now like you just did it like you just done it like you just literally completed the task of cheating or lying or manipulating or leaving something out because you're crazy and the crazy thing about it is y'all i'll say this that even if you lie because you're afraid of them like if you like tell a small lie or leave something out because you're afraid of their reaction. It's nothing major. It's still a lie, but it's nothing major. Like you said, you went to McDonald's. You actually went to Chick Fil A because they uh, they hate Chick Fil A for some reason, right? And you just oh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't go to Chick Fil A. I went to McDonald's, and they they go to your car or find a receipt from Chick Fil A. You'll always be a Chick Fil A a Chick Fil liar. 
<laughs> you always be a big liar to them, <laughs> but that's the space that they are always going to hold you in, y'all. You will always only be how they view you to them, not to everybody else. To them, you will always only be how you view them. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you understand the, the viewpoint that I'm coming from? That I'm trying to attach to this thing. You will always only be to them who you are to them. So I hope y'all understand the gist of where I'm coming from. Just like watch how you talk to these people. Watch how you communicate with them. Only communicate what's necessary to them, especially if you're trying to survive inside or outside of a relationship. Because they love that phrase. We both make mistakes. I also, I'm not perfect either. When you say I'm not perfect either, I'm just telling you, you lose. They love it. They thrive on that right there. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out, check out my links for courses and support groups and whatnot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mental Hillness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Helps reach more people. And click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will see you in the next video. Peace.